Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are talking underspins for fall bass fishing. A couple weeks ago we did an underwater underspin video comparing actions. In that video we promised a follow-up where we would go in depth with the various baits, what they're for, how to fish an underspin, when to fish an underspin, so you can be more effective as a bass fisherman this fall. I've got some tips and some tricks that are gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of money. This should be good, let's start. The underspin is one of my favorite ways to catch a bass. For about a month now, we've been talking fall fishing and we've referenced repeatedly the power of a blade for these fish. Today, I'm really going to explain what I mean by that and then run you through these baits. So in the fall, bass begin targeting bait fish much more aggressively than they did in the summertime. The bait fish begin to group up, whether shallow or deep, and the bass begin to ambush. The bass will typically school and work as a team, not in every fishery, but in most. They'll begin to work together, and when you get those fish fired up, you can catch them one after another after another. Now, even in fisheries where you can't find those heavy schools of bass, you can still catch some of your biggest fish of the year, even as single fish, up targeting bait fish. So the underspin is probably the most universal way to do it. And what I mean is you can catch them shallow, you can catch them deep, you can catch them suspended, you can catch them in the grass. Anywhere that those fish go, there's an option with an underspin. So right out the gate, we're gonna start on the deep side. We're going to go from the bigger baits down to the smaller baits. Then we're going to talk about going shallow, getting up in and around cover. That's just how we'll break it down. And I've got four, five, six really key tips for you along the way in addition to just talking about the baits themselves. So the first two baits that we're going to talk about, the first one is the Blade Runner head. The second is the Hog Farmer. Both are larger style underspins compared to a lot of the finesse offerings that are out there on the market. These larger baits are going to be typically for fishing that deeper water or for suspended fish when you need a lot of control over your bait. So let's start with the Blade Runner. The Blade Runner, we're typically using a screw lock. They make two versions, one with a screw, one without. I'm going to come right back to that. But you guys saw in our underwater footage just how much flash and vibration comes off of this head. It's a very thin head, very narrow. It's destabilized, so it will give you a lot of rock and movement in the water, which throws a ton of light and flash. Now, when bass are chasing bait fish, they're coming in and they're looking, if we're talking shad, they might be looking at a school of 2,000 shad or 5,000 or 100,000 shad. You throw a swim bait in there, you are just another shad. But when you start adding flash vibration, giving that rock, that movement, and that blade down there, making all that commotion, suddenly you're one shad surrounded by a huge ball of bait. They'll move away from you. They'll leave you alone and you stand out from the crowd. Your potential goes through the roof for catching these fish. If you're just one in a million, you can, you can cast all day in those bait fish and once in a while you'll get a bite. But when you can stand out, you can get down, work through that bait and the bass see you. That bait ball opens up and lets you swim through and you're the loner and the bass shoot straight for that loner every time. You can catch them cast after cast after cast when they're schooled up. So the Blade Runner I like because it is destabilized and I get so much flash and movement and commotion and it's incredibly effective. Now if I was only going to throw one size I would go with a half ounce but I throw the little ones, honestly, I go all the way down to a quarter, but a three-eighths, a half, and a three-quarter are the primary sizes I'm throwing. But again, if I could only have one, the half ounce. Just like we showed you in that underwater footage, this guy right here, 
that color, and we'll link all this for you down in the video description, but this color gives off more flash than all the others. There's also a plated gold color. In fact, I, let me grab one for you. The gold one, if you're in a fishery that has clear water, that silver is where it's at. But if you've got really murky water, you know, your water just never gets clear, that gold will also give that flash, but it just shows so much better in that murky water. So a second option, that bright silver, that bright gold. Then of course, there's all sorts of painted colors as well, but you just want to stand out from the crowd. Now, a trick for this head that you don't know, and I want you to know, we're always trying to be similar to the bait fish that we're imitating. So some fisheries you'll pull up and the shad are this big. Other ones, they're this big. You go to another lake, there are no shad, but there's little minnows and they're three inches long. You're always trying to get similar so that you fit what those fish are looking for, but then that flash lets you stand out. So you make sense, but you're the loner. So the blade size can make all the difference, not just the overall profile. If all the bait are little and you've got a great big blade down there flashing around, those fish will totally turn off that thing. Or if they're on great big bait and you've got a little tiny blade down there spinning, they may not be into it. So something to keep in mind with the Blade Runner, they make the screw lock version, which is the main one I use, but they also make this version, which was originally desi designed for paddle tail style baits. It fits better with those, but that's not the important part of what I'm gonna tell you here. The important part is that these two are the same size. These are both a half ounce. The screw lock always has one size smaller blade than the other styles. Let me pull that back off there. The screw lock is one size down on the blade from the standard. So if you've got bigger bait fish, you can move up a blade size in the same weight by using this style head. If you have smaller bait fish, you can move down a blade size by going with a screw lock. The tip that will save you. Now, next one, the hog farmer. What do I like about the hog farmer? Again, I throw it in those same three eighths, half and three quarter. My primary is the half, but I'm gonna tell you right now, what I love about this bait, you still get really good movement out of it, but you don't get that wide rock. This head is stable. Now, if I'm fishing wide open, clear water, suspended fish, I want as much rock and commotion as I can get. I want flash, but if you are anywhere near current, so you guys that live on river systems, whether you're fishing a river or you're fishing a TVA lake where there's current passing through your lake, if there's a lot of current, a destabilized head will drive you crazy because it won't run right. The current will knock it off balance. If you go to a heavy enough head, it'll run great. You know, a three quarter ounce or a one ounce, they'll run great even in current but then you start losing the reason you were throwing it in the first place. This hog farmer with that rounded head, it's more stable. It tracks extremely well in current. Do not be afraid of the three quarter. It sounds big, right? Three quarter ounce sounds like a big underspin. It's not a big underspin at all. Don't be afraid to use that three quarter, especially if you have current or if your fish are deep. If your fish are 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 feet deep, throw a heavier head. Get down there quick, don't waste time. When bass are schooling, it's all about firing them up, getting them revved up, getting them feeding. If it takes you a minute to reel a bass back up out of there and 30 seconds to get back down there, by the time you get there, the fish will have cooled off. But if you grind your fish up out of there, let him go, fire back out, and that thing sinks like a bullet, and you're right back to it, you can keep those fish fired up over and over and over again. So both of these heads are great for deep water, 
for open water, for schooling fish, but one is destabilized, more flash. The other one is stabilized, tracks better, especially in fisheries with current. Both have a great hook. Both will handle giant fish. Both are great baits. Now, next tip, let's jump. You know what, we're gonna jump over here, right out the gate. This is my head, this is the Matt Allen swim bait head. Not an underspin, just a standard swim bait head. That's on a Rage Shad. The reason why I'm pulling this one out is to show you both of these. This is a quick trick that you can do. Anytime you're headed out fishing, it doesn't hurt to keep blades with you. We've talked about this one in the past, and we just talked about this one in our last gear review. Both of these will help you turn any swim bait into an underspin in a pinch. So this one you screw in, you just take any swim bait on a swim bait head, come down to the belly, screw right in there. Now you have an underspin that fast. Let me unscrew it. This is the Z-Man. This one you just press right in there. You can change your angle, of course, pull it out. You need a steeper angle, put it in there. Just gives you options. So you can use any swim bait head with any hook, any weight in on the fly and add a blade to it and keep you fishing instead of wasting time. Now, let's start moving down to the smaller baits. Right out the gate, the standard for the smaller baits is that little cool baits. That little guy right there. We throw it in that eighth ounce a lot. I mean, we're talking throwing it on a spinning rod, a light line, you can throw it on six pound line, eight pound line all day long. It's an easy hook to set. Pair it up with a 2.8 Kitek or a little spark shad or a little jackal. You've got all sorts of options there. But that little guy flat gets bit when nothing will get bit. What we use these for is you can do the same thing with them. You can just fish them on suspended fish. You can cast at bait that's up shallow, but where they really shine, what we really use them for is when the going gets tough. See those bigger baits, we're using those when bass are aggressive. They're on that bait, they're feeding, and all we have to do is get their attention. That's it. And they'll come over and eat it. Well, some days it's not like that. You might live on a fishery where it's rarely like that. Downsizing can make all the difference. Almost every fishery has little bait fish. Now, if you pull up and there's big bait fish and they're eating them, don't go this direction. You're hurting yourself. But if that feeding frenzy is not happening, or if it's happening but it's on little bait, go straight to the little guy. So this little cool baits, you fish it on light line, you can either fish it mid-column, throw it out and just reel it back. Think of it like a finesse spinner bait. All these baits, just a finesse spinner bait. Or you can let it go to the bottom and crawl it. Now what's so interesting about this bait in particular is that we're going so slow on the bottom, we're just creeping on the bottom, that half the time the blade isn't even spinning but we find that it still works better than a standard head with no blade if they're around bait or if you have that murkier water. And what I believe that is, is even when the blade's not twirling, it's down there under that bait hitting bottom. It's dragging on the rocks. It's bumping into cover. You're getting sound out of that blade, almost like a rattle on a jig. You get sound out of that thing as it's ticking rocks and it just pulls those fish in farther than they would for a standard little swim bait. Not to take away from the little swim bait, there's a time and a place for each, but that guy gets them, whether or not that blade is turning. Mid column, it's down there spinning. On the bottom, a lot of times, it's just sliding around, dragging on those rocks, but it calls them in either way. Now let's take a break there. Let's talk about another quick tip for you. Trailer color. If you have really murky water, you may want to go to a really bright trailer. The only exception to that is chartreuse blue. You'll find that we use chartreuse blue quite a bit 
especially around smallmouth. It's like a magical cover for color for a smallmouth. It just pulls them out of the woodwork. But more often than not, you're going to see us using really natural tones. Tennessee Shad, Ghost Rainbow, and then my two favorites for this time of year, Pro Blue Red Pearl. I've got baits missing out of both these packs because I've been fishing with them. Pro Blue Red Pearl, and then your Shad, Electric Shad. These two colors really match Shad extremely well. You get those natural tones, but you also get that little bit of flash that just fools those fish. So, the reason why I bring this up is because I like those natural tones to get more bites, and I find that when that blade is there flashing, the fish will eat the entire thing. If I put a bright trailer on there, I'll get short stripes. They'll just come up and grab the trailer and not get all of it. But if the focus, the brightest point is up in front, they tend to eat it whole. Now, there can be exceptions to that rule. There can be times that you're out there on the water and those fish just seem to grab that blade. It's like that's the only thing they see and they grab it and pull on it and you can't hook them. Then go to a bolder trailer color and then hopefully they'll eat it whole. But you can use that swim bait color to change how that fish eat the, eats that bait or to get them to eat it more often, to get more bites out of them. I just find that the natural tones get a lot more bites for me than the bolder colors. But occasionally you have to switch it up. Next up, that little guy, the Damiki. You guys saw this one in that recent underwater video. Paired up with this little Reaction Innovations, it did some crazy things in the water. It almost had this sway to it that no other bait has. It's a really interesting option. Of course, you can pair it up with a standard swim bait. Damiki makes a great option. The 2.8 Kitek is a great option. Again, you can put any of those little baits on the back of these heads, but this Damiki head in particular, paired up with this bait, does something that no other bait can do. And it's a really unique action. And those fish, you know what happens when they see something unique for the first time. They come unglued for it. So that is a really interesting way to go. Again, we throw it in the lighter sizes. The lighter head with a lighter hook will give you the best walk. When you go to a heavier head on any of these baits, the heavier the head, the more stabilized the bait, the more it will track straight and the less of that unique action you'll get. But if you're going deep, you just have to go heavy so that you can get down there fast, get in front of those fish while they're still fired up. Last but not least, before we switch over to our weedless options, is this little guy. And honestly, not even an underspin, but we have to talk about it. This is Mega Bass's screw head. So you've got a blade that sits between the head and the swim bait. It's not an underspin, but I don't know where else to put this bait except in the underspin category um, because it is different, but it's still bladed and it's still flash. So this little guy, this is the smallest head that they make it in. It's little. If I'm not mistaken, it's a 16th, but we'll link it down there for you. It's got that blade and then you go with that little spark shad on the back and those paired together give you a really good action that you don't get with just a standard swim bait head. You get almost where that swim bait is rocking that head plus you get that flash. So you still get flash but you get a really unique movement and it's very different than anything else that these fish have seen. When we were back in Michigan and Wisconsin earlier this year, we were with our buddy Kobe and Kobe put the hammer on him with this little guy. He was catching giant, giant smallmouth and we'd thrown it before, we'd seen the effectiveness before, but you know how once in a while somebody is just hitting those fish so hard that just the light bulb goes off. This is different. It's different enough that the fish respond in a completely different way. And it's a really interesting option if your fish are seeing a ton of underspins already. Now, let's head over to our weedless options. The two hooks that I use, Owner Flashy Swimmer 
in a five aught, and then that trocar swim blade in the three aught. Those together, a three aught and a five aught, are actually very similar in size with these two companies. So if you get a trocar, don't get one that's too big. But either one of these pairs extremely well to a 4.8 Kitec or to the bigger River to Sea D Walker, the 120. Here's one paired up to the 4.8 Kitec and Electric Shad. Now here's a trick for these guys. Well, first, let's talk about when to throw this. The underspin traditionally was something that we did in deeper water, open water, hard bottom where you can bump it on the rocks but not get all snagged up. But you really couldn't throw it around the grass or tules or any debris up shallow. When these weedless offerings started coming out a couple years ago, it completely changed the underspin game for us because all of a sudden you could take that deep game that you already knew how to do, you knew how effective it was in the fall, and you could take it dirt shallow. So when the bass were blowing up bait fish in the backs of pockets, suddenly you could get in there without getting snagged. You didn't have to throw a spinner bait. You could be a little more finessey because this setup right here is essentially a spinner bait. It's catching those same fish, right? You've got a swim bait in there working. You've got that blade, that flash, that vibration, but it's just a better, finessier package. It's not so bright, not so bold. It's not so large. You'll just get more bites more consistently. So once this happened, you could take it anywhere. Now we skip them under docks. You can fish them in and around laid down wood. You can fish it right over and through grass beds. There's nowhere you can't go with an underspin. Anywhere the bass have got those bait fish and they're eating them, you can go. Now the trouble is that you go through a ton of baits with this setup. A ton of baits because the fish will come up and eat them and rip them and it just tears out of that head. Now these baits or these heads, they come with a medium sized CPS spring. This is something we talked to you guys about once this spring, but if you missed it, this is about to save you a ton of money. So you take your standard flashy swimmer, let me get it out of this package. See that medium spring on there? You screw that into your swim bait and then Texas rig. That's how you get weedless. You take this medium and you just get rid of it. It'll screw right off. Okay, there's the medium. And you replace it. This is owner CPS springs. The owner makes these guys. This is the large size instead of a medium. It's way bigger. Well, it fits perfectly in a 4.3 or a 4.8 Kitec, or in those D walkers, any of those larger swim baits, it'll work. Mm -hmm. I've already done it to this head right here. So this is the five aught owner flashy swimmer. I switched it to a large spring. Look at the difference. I can pull on this thing until the swim bait literally rips in half. It will not pull out, it won't. I mean, you could do this all day long. It will not pull out of that head. Eventually, the entire bait will fail, but you won't lose the swim bait before that. If you throw shallow, weedless underspins, you know the pain. You know how many baits you go through. This is the end of that. You'll have little pieces hanging on, and you're still catching fish. You're still catching them. We were catching, we went from catching one to two to four or five fish on a weedless underspin before you had lost your Kitec and had to put a new one on to catching 10, 15, 20 until that Kitec was just mangled and destroyed and you finally felt bad for it and put another one on. So that large spring, critical. It will save you a ton of money. So that kind of wraps up the heads. Those weedless guys, again, Texas rig, skin hook, throw it anywhere. The last thing I want to add is retrieve speed and then then we'll wrap it up with the gear itself. Retrieve speed varies a lot. You can throw them like a spinnerbait where you're going fast. You can even burn them right under the surface but I think a lot of people with an underspin tend to go too fast. When I talk to a guy and he's not catching them and I watch him fish they're normally doing that fast thing. Don't be afraid 
to just creep that thing. Just let it bump bottom. Now, if the fish are up, obviously you need to be up. But if they're not, don't be afraid to slow down. These baits are much more weedless than you would think. Even with an exposed hook, that bait is so wide, it will tend to crawl and bump and hop its way through things without that hook catching. I'm not saying it's perfectly weedless. I'm not saying you're not gonna lose baits, but you'll lose less than you expect. It's worth doing. And then with those weedless, same thing. You can just creep them on the bottom. They won't catch up on anything. It's amazing how well they do. And it's the same story. If you're going faster, that blade's spinning. If you slow down to just that crawl, it's not even spinning. It's down there just sliding on the bottom under that bait. But those fish hear it and they come a long way to get it. Now, as far as gear goes, depending on the size of the bait, obviously that matters. The little guys, I'm throwing on a spinning rod or an ultralight bait caster, throwing it on six or eight pound line. But the, all the bigger baits, you want to be prepared for battle. And what I mean by that is these have pretty big hooks, big jig hooks in them. So you want to be using at least a seven foot rod. I like a seven to seven two, all the way up to a seven five or seven six, but either a medium heavy or a heavy. You want a stout rod because the value in an underspin is one that you're catching more fish, but two, it attracts giant fish. And you wanna be prepared when that happens because I have had clients out on my boat where we're catching eight to 14 inch fish and then all of a sudden there's an eight pounder on or a 10 pounder on or an 11 pounder on. I mean, we catch giants on the underspin and they're in the mix with those little fish. But the underspin gets under the little fish and lets you access those monster fish that are very hard to reach any other way. So you just don't know when the biggest fish of your life is going to latch on to that underspin. You have no idea. So your gear needs to be ready. So again, a medium heavy at a minimum, I prefer a heavy. And then I'm fishing either 50 to 65 pound braid, just so I have total control. And then of course I'm tying a leader from there. This is one of those things you can do it with mono or fluoro, excuse me, fluoro. Uh, either 15 to 20 pound is typically what I'm doing, unless it's clear water. I'll go all the way down to 12, but I prefer 15, 18, 20 pounds, somewhere in that range. The Maxima Ultra Green Mono is that standard mono that we use as a shock absorber for our leader material. And then you guys also know that FC100 fluoro is bulletproof as a leader material. Either the 16 or the 20 pound works so good for this technique. Because again, you use heavy braid, but then you use that leader as your shock absorber. So you smash those fish and you start grinding, but if they're bulldogging on the side of the boat, that stretchy line, it'll absorb it instead of something breaking. Otherwise your line has to break or your hook has to bend to relieve that pressure. You don't want that, obviously. So that stretchy mono or that stretchy fluorocarbon, that special fluoro designed to do that, will eat that up and you'll get those big fish in the boat. Guys, I know that was a ton of information to take in. A lot of baits, a lot of heads, different reasons for each one, but the underspin is an amazing technique really year round, but it shines so bright in the fall. You can keep it simple. You could buy yourself a half ounce blade runner and then a little cool baits and just go fishing and you're going to do dynamite. But if you want to fine tune it or if you know you're on a fishery that's got grass and those won't work for you, you need to be weedless or you know that on one fishery you've got big bait, the other fishery you've got little bait. There are a lot of options here where you can really dial it in and target those biggest fish effectively because again an underspin will catch numbers but it will also catch those absolute freak size fish that we're all hoping to catch if you enjoyed the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel and we'll talk to you soon